All right, so I get to introduce the Wakanda Alliance. Um, now, I know it may be possible, although it seems improbable, that uh, maybe there's somebody here that doesn't know exactly what Wakanda means. So just in case you haven't heard, <laughs> Wakanda is a term that appeared first in a comic book called The Fantastic Four um, back in 1966. Um, and then it made a reappearance in Black Panther. So I'm going to share this real quick. If you could see that, that's Black Panther number one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was asked to introduce this because I actually have some uh, relationship to, uh, you know, comic books and uh, so we have a small collection here at my house. Um, I also wanted to point out that before writer Stanley and uh, artist Jack Kirby created this Wakanda, this hidden kingdom of scientists, warriors who had these vast technological capabilities uh, and made their, their area the most advanced civilization on the planet. Um, I just wanted to uplift the fact that the word Wakanda is also used by Plain Indians uh, uh, in Omaha, Kansas area. Uh, Wakanda um, is a name for God. And Wakanda also has a more of a meaning. It's also both a source and a destination. It's a place from which all goodness emerge and to which all aspire to journey. Um, so the Wakanda Alliance here in Buffalo in which that name comes from, is a comic reading and comprehension workshop. They take readers on an explorative historical journey behind Marvel's most famous African superheroes. Uh, through this program, Wakanda Alliance gets family engaged in reading, arts, team building, goal building, getting stronger, smarter together, and they inspire our community. Um, LISC has uh, the pleasure of working with Waka the Wakanda Alliance. We actually have an AmeriCorps member uh, placed with them this year, and we're very proud of that fact. Um, and right now, the Wakanda Alliance will lead us through a story um, with one of their family participants for whom we uh, do this work. It will be followed by a visioning journey of what is possible for our community, for our neighborhood. So thank you, it gives me great pleasure to introduce them, and I'll pass on the torch. Uh, Ann, are you on, you wanna introduce us? Yes, absolutely. So Tyra, thank you so much for that introduction. We might need to take some things because it's funny because when we, when we were developing this, uh, I looked up to see what, what other type of Wakanda things, if the word Wakanda popped up in any, any other school systems. Mostly no, but then I saw Wakanda in, in like, what you said, Kansas or Omaha, somewhere around there. I'm like, what's going on here? And I saw it spelled differently. So, you know, I meant to do all that research, but that was an excellent uh, introduction. I don't need to say anything. <laughs> I'm kidding. So hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Pierce. I am one of the founding members of Wakanda Alliance, along with uh, John Washington, Davon McCune, and DQ Grant. Uh, we, are, we come from a very diverse group of intellectuals and, and comic fans alike who saw that there was a bigger picture to this phenomenon that is Black Panther and Wakanda. Uh, we take a look at their social structures, how it's developed over the years in the comics, um, how they, you know, navigate having a matriarchy or a patriarchy. It's not really either one of those. It's, it's combined, right? Um, their technology, how they've taken this, uh, if you saw the movie, uh, this material called vibranium fell from space, and they find out how to do everything from increase their weapons or strengthen their weapons to sew it into the fabric of the clothes and make the clothes bulletproof or, you know, whatever. So, um, looking at the technology, looking at the, the spiritualism behind it. You saw in the movie how they're, um, they pray to a panther god, but then you know that panther god bestows a type of responsibility and they all take that with pride and joy. So there's a lot of different things that we took from the comic and that we saw as individual comic fans. And then we saw you know, how much kids really reacted to seeing not only just black faces, but specifically how black women were treated or how uh, the black men had to treat the black women and, and all the how the uh, just the, the colors and you know this is this is something that everybody felt but we really knew it resonated with the kids and we know that they're not going to get that same uh, reinforcement in their schools and pro and you know pro programs so we made our own program and so that's what the Wakanda Alliance is it's, it branched out from just being directed to kids to being branched out to the families as you will see later on today in the program. So um, it becomes an intergenerational space where people can learn about the African diaspora, 
see where all these tribes and things that I mentioned are from and see how, you know, it, it reflects in our own societies and how we have more appreciation for those other societies that have existed for hundreds or thousands of years. So uh, some of the goals that we have here at the Wakanda Alliance, we identify historical references in the Black Panther comics. So whenever there's a mention of uh, the Mercy tribe or uh, a cult and a, a spiritual deity like Shango, which they'll name like a ship after or something like that, uh, we'll explore where those, those contexts come from and then bring it to the workshop and then build our curriculum around that. Uh, we also uh, see the impacts, seek to impact the future by learning the past. So um, there's many sayings from around the world saying that you can't go forward unless you understand your past. And that's something that's definitely prevalent in, uh, in our communities. Uh, also, we want to explore the beauty of the African diaspora. So understanding that it's not just Africa, it's not just America, but it's South America, it's Central America, it's the Caribbean. It's, um, uh, it's all over the world, right? Because we all have a, just the, the spreading of the African influence all around the world. Um, and growing our own cultures from there on. And then lastly, uh, understanding the techniques of storytelling and world building, because comics are, you know, storytellers. Um, but, you know, uh, culturally, we are storytellers, and we find ways to tell stories through our art, through our music, um, through our writing. So we really want that to also resonate with, the, with whoever's at a program to see that their talent can be used to tell a story. And... Uh, take influence from the present and from the past and then reimagine the future. Do we have control of the, of the slide here? Um, do we want to bring in James? Is he on? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, there you could just start, tell us hey, a little bit. What's up, everybody? You. Yeah, so James and his family. James has two sons, Skylar and Logan who are astounding gentlemen. I really appreciate them being in, in the course. We really appreciate them being in the course. Uh, when we first started, they came to, I think, every single one for the first year. So um, with that, they learned uh, different things about the African diaspora. They learned about the history of Juneteenth. They learned about maroon cultures in Jamaica and South America. They uh, helped us make that. We they did their own mask. We had a mask making activity. Um, so he, the, James and his family has been a, uh, an ultimate addition to our program. And we presented them with certificates certifying their uh, wisdom and uh, interest in the African diaspora and also learning the program and being part of Afrofuturism, which is something we're going to get into shortly. Uh, do we want to put on James now or do we want to dump into the Afrofuturism? Go ahead. Go ahead, James. Uh oh, no. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Good. Um, my name is James. Hi. Oh, there I am. Uh, this is my, these are my boys. If you guys want to hop in so they can see you. Hey. <laughs> this is Logan. Uh, do you want to tell them your name and age? Um, my name is Logan. I'm 12 years old. And this is uh, my other son. My name is Skyler. I'm 13. And uh, we have been going to uh, Wakanda Alliance since its inception. Um, I think for myself, um, actually, I'll let the boys go kind of share some of the things that they've been learning, um, how it's affected them, how it's impacted them. Um, when do you guys want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Um, I think... Um, Do you want to talk? No. Do you want to talk about like what what kind of things did you talk to me about? Like what kind of okay. things are you learning about? What kind of lines is super fun and also it put it it show it teaches you a lot of Afrofuturism and a lot of history, but also in a fun way so that you're never <laughs> bored and it's not like school. Or anything. So you want to tell me like what kind of things you learn? Um. Some things I've learned is that, um, like the Dora Milaje from Black Panther, they were a real, they were a real thing in real life, and they fought. There were a group of women, and they fought. Yeah, nice. And also, 
they do a ton of cool activities. Like one time we made a whole bunch of masks. And yeah. What were the what did the masks represent? Um, they were masks that that people used in Africa. To do what? For our celebrations. Celebrations, any other kind of things that they did? Ceremonies. Ceremonies. Yep. You were talking about masks too, Skyler. Do you want to talk about some, kind of some stuff that you were learning about? And because uh, you talked specifically about the masks, right? Yeah, I said the masks were. Uh, they were the whole thing was really educational. The masks talked about uh, a bunch of ceremonies they did, like uh, coming of age stuff. I think it's called, and like uh, when boys turn into men. And uh, like there were certain uh, designs. One of them was like squares, and so filled squares represented uh, the elder, the older people with all their wisdom. They're full of wisdom, and then the empty ones represented people, uh, the new men. Quote. But uh, what happened was the the empty circle, the empty squares represented like people that are that don't have knowledge, and they're gonna fill up with knowledge as they grow up and stuff like that it's really educational do you have fun doing it i, I did have fun doing a lot of the work on the line stuff is there anything else you want to talk about it okay uh for myself i think that um it's really cool to have something to take you know having two young men um growing up and trying to teach them it's good to have an outlet outside of um myself uh, teaching them things, uh, helping them to grasp things, even things that like I go there and I learn stuff constantly. Uh, there's definitely been times where uh, even I've went and um, and we would, and I would, uh, I'm trying to think of what was the one specifically, um, um, like the Maroons, Logan talked about the Maroons to me earlier, um, but it's part of like the comics and it's really cool how like even uh, things that are in the comics um, that are in real life that have happened in history that you can go back and learn from. Um, it, it helps me to sometimes go back and think like, oh, maybe I should go look into this and dive a little bit deeper, uh, learn a little bit more um, and um, grow in my own uh, history knowledge and capacity. Um, the Afrofuturism part of it uh, was really cool. Um, I think for myself, seeing ourselves in the future, um, you know, having, again, two young men um, having them to be in a position where they could see themselves, not just um, where they are, but to imagine great things, you know, like um, with, with even Wakanda and the comic books, you know, they had a rich history. They had, you know, technology that goes beyond anything that we could begin to, to even understand and to have it, have things like that for my boys to see themselves in the future and represented in TV. Um, and comics and other things and to have a hope and a, and a dream for something to shoot for, you know, that um, we're not limited to specific things. But it's been really enriching, uh, extremely educational, a ton of fun. Uh, that's why we keep going back. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much, that's about it. So let's give some snaps for James, Logan, and Skyler. Woo! I really appreciate them. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we've had a, a fantastic time. We've had, uh, we usually try to target an age range of maybe 10 and 12 to maybe 17 and up, but we've had people as young as seven come into our, our group. And then, you know, we'll do like a group reading session and it's, it's good to see that uh, kids are learning new vocabulary or practicing reading aloud, practicing the, their reading skills and all that. Uh, it's just a fantastic space. And I, won't, I have a habit of like rocket rocketing off when I talk about Wakanda Alliance. So I apologize, I didn't properly introduce my uh, other tribe members here. Um, the Wakanda Alliance is just our program, but we go by a collective name, the, uh, the Galactic Tribe. Uh, so Davon McEwen is here, John Washington is here, and also D DQ Grant are here with me also. So if you guys wanna jump in and just introduce yourselves real quick. Don't so forget like, we have Geo too. Oh, Gio's here too, all right, fantastic. Yeah, Gio is here also. She's, also. The, she's one of the most important elements. You know, can't forget G with the queen. That's Word. our sister. All right, if you guys want to go first and just like introduce yourselves real quick before we continue. <clears throat> well, I am DQ Grant. I am one of the founding members of the Wakanda Minds program. 
uh, and the Galactic Tribe. Um, it's just been a blast. It's just been so fun seeing families come in, you know, enjoying our space, sharing our space with us. Like, we did not know what we were getting into when we started this. Like, it was something that's new, fresh, innovative. And we were, you know, just trying to shoot from the hip to hopefully seeing, you know, doing something that we felt that was needed in the, um, the community. So, you know, I'm still just uh, at awe right now about the whole situation. But, you know, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Liz, for having us. Uh, Gio, you want to go? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Gio Hernandez. I use she, her. I'm working with a coalition named New York Renews. Um, on the state level, working on the ecological and climate and environmental justice. I am not a founding member um, of Wakanda Alliance, but extremely blessed to have encountered um, the folks that you have here that are founding members, um, because it really is and it has been a transformational experience for me personally. Um, understanding, learning about Afrofuturism, it really comes down to healing and um, identity discovery learning about myself as an Afro-Latina, as a Dominican woman um, who has been born and raised in the States, but no knowledge of um, my African roots um, and how that came to be and, and how that intersects with white supremacy, colonialism, and all the systems of oppression that we're actively still experiencing to this day. Um, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave it there, um, but just extremely blessed to be a part of this collective and the love and the healing and care um, that is bred in and out of this experience um, and seeing the need for us to like expand so much more because it's not only us that need healing, it's all of us as well as the earth. All right, um, my name is Davon McCune and um, I wanna say, uh, I like the, the definition that uh, Tyra gave of uh, the Native Americans in uh, Oklahoma and Kansas, where she said Wakanda is the uh, source and the destination. And, um, and uh, don't let DQ fool you. Uh, he has very big plans and, um, uh, and in the essence of uh, Afrofuturism, you know what I'm saying? It's always, it's ever growing, every meeting that we have and every planning session. And uh, in that same uh, sense of uh, Wakanda, and how they used it, I believe that uh, children are our present and our future. And so uh, I think it's uh, synonymous in, in them being the source and the destination. And so within it, uh, I know for myself, I wanna build, uh, bring critical consciousness building so that they learn about the systems around them, the political systems, the economic system, the food systems, the uh, community systems, medical systems, transportation systems, learn about environmental and climate justice and, and wrap it up in a way that is accessible and uh, that is inviting. And so that it becomes uh, natural in our everyday talks. And so every day we, uh, in our program, we do try to bring in knowledge from the streets, from organizers um, and activists. We try to bring in visual artists and uh, performing artists. And uh, we really try to uh, spread that knowledge and, and work with uh, organizations like uh, LISC to actually help uh, not only unite our community, but build up our community. And so uh, LISC, thank you for this opportunity and I will pass it to John. And John, I think you can also uh, start to screen share again. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, my name is John Washington. I'm gonna be quick because uh, they already pretty much laid it all out. Uh, love my team. Um, but really excited to have this opportunity to talk to a larger audience about um, how the work that we do really translates to, to community development. And uh, now Devon's going to get into a little bit of, of what Afrofuturism is. All right. So if anybody wants to uh, put in the chat what they believe Afrofuturism is, um, or even if uh, one or two people uh, just want to unmute themselves and answer, what do they think uh, Afrofuturism is? Uh, we would love to hear what uh, some people already know, as the definition is uh, ever growing and ever evolving. Uh, thank you. We're thrilled to work with uh, you too, Julie and Lisk. Um, all right. Uh, if I don't see the chat populating. A uh, future that, okay, Drew has a future that centers the experience of people of color. Uh, yes, yes, dope. 
Uh, that's a, uh, an excellent uh, definition, Drew. Um, uh, hey, my former classmate, Drew Area, uh, a philosophy intersection of Afro diaspora and with technology. Uh, Jennifer, great answer. Um, and with that, I think we're running a little behind. So John, you can go to the next slide. So uh, we have uh, Afrofuturism is uh, it started as a sci-fi genre of storytelling that takes inspiration from the African diaspora history of uh, people and culture, and uh, it was mainly in writing and um, and but it wasn't seen on screen. So when you look at uh, Star Wars or Star Trek, there is noticeably a uh, lack of color. <laughs> there is noticeably a lack of color and so we're not represented and that's how the world has uh, seen us uh, and how uh, colonization has treated us as uh, we were tools for to build their future not really with us um, being seen but with it being built uh, upon our backs and as it grows the movement builds in literature music and art and um, popular culture and um, it is ever growing. And then as I learned, and uh, what I like is I like reality. I believe that uh, history has the greatest uh, stories that can be found. Um, so often when I talk about Afrofuturism, I want to point out that we are the dreams of our ancestors. So when uh, Harriet Tubman was uh, freeing uh, the thousands of slaves that she can free, uh, she was thinking about us. So we are the living embodiment of, of Afrofuturists and everything that they did. And when Martin Luther King talked about a dream, we are the, uh, we are the manifestation of his dream. The dream is not complete yet, but we are headed in that direction. And, um, but the more popular uh, forms of uh, Afrofuturism is uh, in the comics. Um, and so does anybody know any of these pictures um, that are on here? Yes, Tyra loves Octavia Butler. She is the queen mother of Afrofuturism and uh, the most influential writer um, within the genre. Uh, does anybody else know any of these characters that they see? Ah, Jenna, yes, Miles Morales um latinx and black <laughs> yes james miles morales is definitely our guy um anybody else and actually i'm gonna let uh ant take over with uh describing some of the pictures because uh he was uh born in it i adopted it <laughs> <laughs> as long as you know you're my brother man that's, that's what <laughs> so yeah so um a couple other images we have here um the one at the top there, on the top right, that uh, figure of a, looks like a machine of some sort with an African mask, uh, that was just a sketch that uh, one of my artist friends was working on and he just loves the idea of bringing uh, culture and technology and fusing them, right? So you, we've had all types of giant robots, you've seen Gundams, you've seen the Iron Giant, uh, Gigantor, if you're like into anime and all that, there's been a bunch of different giant robots, but very few of them reflects uh, a, a culture like this, a tribal culture, or um, just like something that, that comes from something that isn't in Western or even in Far Eastern uh, mm -hmm. mythos, right? So that one has like an African mask on it. Um, and then on the bottom there, the bottom right, we have uh, the Orishas. So uh, the Orishas, the way that it's spelled there is taken from, us, uh, from the Brazilian uh, spirituality system, which is called Santeria. Uh, but Santeria is actually a stem of Ifa, which originated in West Africa, namely what is present day uh, Nigeria through the Yoruba people. So, um, so whoever this artist is, he probably has some type of background. I haven't done my research on it just yet. But um, the the Yorishas are spiritual deities um, that uh, represent different things in, in nature and guide their guide their followers uh, based upon a, a lot of different principles and morales. So um, it's just interesting seeing the transition of, or progression rather, of a spiritual system as it's been taken from Africa to Brazil to America and spread all across the world and now through this, this comic. So that's one of the things we really wanna to get to is saying, so, so for example, you saw how uh, Schuyler explained how the white squares and the black squares represented wisdom and then growing wisdom. Imagine, scholars taking that and putting it into a comic and now 
that comic now is a representation of what he thinks is maturation or the characters go through a rites of passage. So that's kind of the, the framework that we're trying to build for our youth. And so they can take what, the, what they're presented in real world uh, information and then uh, putting it back into the creativity. Next slide. Yep, so uh, here we have some musical examples. So there's been a, a ton of examples even before the term Afrofuturism was uh, coined uh, back in the 90s, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, in the middle there, we have Sun Ra, who was like the king of Afrofuturism in, in jazz music. Uh, he's wearing a, an outfit that resembles Egyptian culture, ancient Egyptian culture. Uh, one of the, uh, his name, his namesake, Sun Ra, comes from a god, Amun Ra, who was pretty much the all high deity of the sun and everything that grows and you know fertility and all that. Uh, we also have on the left there, we have Janelle Monet, who, who uses a lot of different African influence in the way she expresses her fashion. So the Bantu knots right there at the top, that's something you weren't, you wasn't seeing in the 70s, really, uh, unless you went to a black exploitation film. But now we have better representation with uh, things like, or with people like Janelle Monet, who expresses her art. We also have outcast ATLs for all the 90s cast, 90s hip hop heads out there, uh, talking about how their cars were spaceships and just kind of looking at their world as being kind of just otherworldly, right? Something to kind of break the humdrum of being surrounded by poverty, surrounded by people who are downtrodden and, 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 and oppressed, essentially. So, and then they kind of mix that up with the comic uh, influence as well. And then on the right there, we got Mega Ran, who takes video games and kind of expresses himself using video games. And then we got Parliament, which is for the old heads. That's before my time. Y'all not old heads, y'all wise heads, all right? So I just want to make that clear. Um, but nonetheless, they did all types of things when they did their live shows, like having spaceships present and bringing out large speakers and having people dance and funky clothing. So um, yeah, that's an era that I definitely respect for uh, what they did in, in their time. Next slide. Yeah, yeah, the P-Funk era. <laughs> cool, so why is, this, why is it important? I mean, you know, we can't really get this from any, there are very few comics that have a big name that, uh, that can, we can bring this, uh, get this knowledge from. We can't get it from Superman, can't get it from Batman, we can't get it from Spider-Man. There's no, there's no ancient Brooklyn, right? There's no ancient New York. So that's why Black Panther is really like the uh, epitome of using uh, world cultures and bringing it to a fictional fantasy comic world uh, that can influence kids and adults all across the uh, all across the world. Uh, it lets us explore beautiful civilizations, like I said, throughout different times too. Ancient Africa doesn't look the same as modern Africa, but through learning about ancient and modern Africa, we can kind of bridge things and see um, just a different side of the continent that isn't exploited, right? Uh, it reminds us of how diverse Black and African histories are, just the entire continent, right? People were for the longest calling Africa a country, but it's so much more than that. There's over, I want to say uh, over 100 countries, um, each with their own individuality, each with their own different uh, economies and social structures, um, and just different histories altogether. It also helps us identify with the character and the story. So whatever that person is going through, uh, obviously, the person's story is coming from another human being. So uh, by writing that story, we kind of get to see how their mind works and how they see the world. It might be different from ours, but that's why we get to digest each other's uh, creativity through this wonderful thing we call the internet, right? Um, and it just pushes our imagination, which is exactly what everybody here is going to do when we go to the breakout rooms and we uh, present our thesis question for the day. And uh, we're just gonna have fun with who we are. You know what I'm saying? So I know we come from all different backgrounds. Um, and, you know, we're going to use that to kind of understand where we are and see where we can be. Next slide. Oh, and it's just awesome. <laughs> this is a really good time. Uh, yeah, so thanks, thanks, Ant, for, for dropping that knowledge about and Devon uh, for just getting us clear about Afrofuturism. I uh, want to dig into more of, you know, how Afrofuturism really like falls on, oops, on land. Um, and so the idea of Wakanda is, is incredibly powerful. And to me, Afrofuturism um, is anti-colonial by nature. Um, so 
when we talk about Wakanda, we have to think about Africa differently. Um, and we have to think about the world differently. Um, Wakanda answers the question, what could Africa look like if it had never been colonized? Uh, what would technology look like if it was designed to work with nature? What would a country look like run by indigenous culture and practices, not Western capitalism? And what would it look like if the abundance of an African nation was not stolen by the rest of the world and used for its own benefit? And these are really simple questions, uh, but they call into question the history of, of a really human history, uh, because so much of what we learn, um, even the year it is, like it is not 2020. There have been human beings um, in different forms on this planet for, for over 2 million years, and yet that history gets erased uh, every day when we say what the day is. And so much of that history uh, is in Africa and is the history of human evolution and the way that all forms of colonialism have plundered Africa, um, have taken its knowledge and resources and stunted Africa's growth for the sake of, of global growth. Um, and so, so much of this gets into the logic of racism, right, of, of international racism and of how all peoples are seen, um, because to me, if Africans are not seen um, for the genius, for the legacy, and if all of us are not seen as extensions, therefore, of Africa as humans, uh, then we are denying ourselves every day. And we are convincing ourselves that what is happening today is more advanced, more civilized, and more, therefore, valued. And this is an insidious way that people get trampled on. Um, because when the Western world and when the capitalist lens uh, looks at you as if you have no value, that is the pretext for colonialism, that is the pretext for slavery, that is the pretext even for professionalism uh, in the development community and professionals coming into communities, telling them what they want, uh, what they can have, and what is possible. Um, so I, I love Wakanda as an example of you know, creating a space uh, and then putting all of these, these ideas uh, on top of that space and then showing us an example. Uh, and that's so important to, to the way that our minds work and challenging us. And I really appreciate Tyra for the intro because that really just blew my mind and now I have to redo this whole presentation. Um, uh, but yeah, Wakanda is kind of our, our North Star. Um, so it's more than just a, a fictional place. It's really a North Star for these values. Uh, so when we look at Buffalo, you know, we want to think about like, what would Buffalo look like if it was run by these principles? Uh, what if it develops without some of these historical processes that we know have held our communities back? Even recently, you know, what if the billions of dollars that were spent um, building up Canal Side, building up the medical campus, um, building up these centers of economic development that do the exact opposite? They actually degradate community economy. Uh, they take away from and corporatize all of the processes that go on in a community uh, to make sure that certain people profit and certain people stay in the same position. Um, so, you know, we try to imagine the, the conflict of what, what would it look like if these things were possible and just for a moment um, ignoring what is going on right now so that we can focus our attention on the future that we want to manifest and that we want to create. And it's important to be clear on what's happened, but we want to center the way that we do our work around what is possible and start to work backwards from that. So, you know, there's particular values, you know, putting people in planet over profit, um, creating social and ecological well-being. Uh, there's this like kind of narrative out there right now that humans and the planet cannot work together when the reality is for most of human history, uh, humans found amazing ways to work and evolve with nature. Uh, lived experience over professional expertise, right? That's a huge when it comes to uh, spaces like this. You know, we have a lot of professionals here and we're thinking about what happens in neighborhoods that we care about, uh, but the reality is we don't have all the people that we need and their lived experience to understand, you know, how we want to do community development work. Uh, we'll get there. Uh, we want to envision a future through the lens of repairing the past, um, not just independently of what has happened, uh, but inspired by it, inspired by what it would look like if these things were repaired. Um, and we want to focus on youth who are going to inherit the consequences of what's going on right now. And they also have this powerful ability to vision uh, because so many of them have not had the years and years of being beaten in the head with white supremacist dominant narratives about who we are, what we can do, what is valued and what is not valued. Um, and really advancing technology in relationship with nature. Um, Wakanda becomes in the comics the most advanced nation on earth, partially because 
their technology doesn't conflict with the natural world. And that is so much even the story of the conflict between Black Panther and Iron Man, a white man who thinks he can solve everything with technology and creates his own demise in creating Ultron and all of his own enemies, uh, and Wakanda, who has been able to, to create technology that can actually uplift all of their people and is really centered around a relationship with nature. Uh, so drop in the chat some of the values that you want to define the future of your community. Um, so this quote to me is really powerful and really inspires like a lot of my vision and work around Afrofuturism uh, really as a political education tool. Um, you know, the oppressed have internalized the image of the oppressor and adopted his guidelines um, and are fearful of freedom. And I think that Afrofuturism gives us an opportunity uh, to kind of shed some of those, those things that we've been told and really imagine and dream in a bigger way um, that allows us to really set a North Star that we can work to. Uh, Adrian Marie Brown, I uh, love this quote, um, says, I believe that all organizing is science fiction. We are shaping the future we long for and have not yet experienced. Uh, and so much of what we often do in organizing advocacy resistance work is focused deeply on changing the systems that exist, uh, but that really puts the scope of what we can see in into that those guardrails of, of our oppressors. And we try to use Wakanda Alliance and some of these things to, to really break that open and help us see a greater vision. So. Uh, real quick, John, before yeah. we uh, go into the breakout, I just, yeah. there's so many good quotes in the chat, um, but I, I want to highlight a um, uh, definition that Gio had for uh, Afrofuturism, and yeah. I think it is uh, so important. Uh, she said, Afrofuturism is a culture of care and seeing ourselves as the superheroes, saving ourselves and saving our world, keeping our peoples and ancestors' traditions alive so that we know who we are and where we're going towards healing, thriving and love. So I hope everybody can uh, keep that in mind as we uh, head into these breakout sections. All right, thanks, John. I was just gonna say, Gio, would you like to say a little bit more about that? Since we have a moment. Um, yeah, I just, like I, I said before, I feel really blessed to like have come across this platform because it is really a sense of self-discovery and really seeing ourselves as the live um, figurines that we read so much about. Like those, as you said, John, and are based on real life stories. And so we need to be taken into account that that's us right now. And every role that we play as a student, as a teacher, as a community organizer, like we really need to come together and understand that we are um, the people of Wakanda. It's just a matter of understanding that for ourselves and each other so that we can love and heal um, so that we don't ever have to be in this situation of oppression ever again and repeating history the way that it has because of the divide and conquer um, framework that our oppressors have held upon us. Rather coming to unite because we are nature defending herself. And we need to really embody that more and more um, because then we will get to this place of actually thriving and caring and loving and love not being so foreign because it's real and it's raw and it's the culture that we embody. Um, as we know and as we've seen like white supremacy and the culture of that has always envied the culture of blackness, of Africanness, right? Because it is stemming of care, of love, of resilience, um, unlike what white supremacy upholds. Like you need to, you need to give a sense of yourself. You need to give deep sense of yourself and your humanity in order to like get the privileges that come with white supremacy. And so reversing that means a deep culture of care um, that is opposing so much of the things that we get taught of how to be and how to do in this world. Wow, thank you so much, Gio. Um, that was really powerful and amazing. A lot of great stuff going on in the chat. Um, I also just wanted to say before we get into the breakouts that um, you know often we are we are taught that we need to take what we can get. Um, but you know, just looking at the world as it is right now, looking at the year 2020 has been, you know, our oppressors are dreaming of a world with everything commodified every single day. They're dreaming of worlds beyond um, our imagination of oppression, right? Um, and they are not thinking about what the rules are and who's going to get in their way. They're clear on their vision and, you know, working in community development, seeing developers have a vision, an outline, 
architectural graph for like every single plot of land in the peace city of Buffalo and fighting every day uh, to chip away at the public ownership of that land, you know, has really inspired me to think that we have to think that same way um, and that we have to be able to, to not continue to say, well, this can't be done, but we need to just focus on this one thing and recognize that that is gonna take an ecology of different strategies and tactics for us to get where we need to go. Uh, but first we have to really start thinking about where we actually need to go not where we think we could get, not what would be the most like harm reducing place that we could get, but where we actually wanna go and, and have that same drive that so many of the people who keep us down do. So our breakout sessions are gonna focus on really visioning, um, you know, what is possible. Uh, so at the end of the Black Panther movie, you know, they talk about uh, bringing Wakandan technology and resources to Oakland. Uh, we want everyone to imagine that that movie ends and you know they they drop down in Buffalo and they say, look, we want to offer our resources, our technology. We have a blank check, and you can do whatever you want. Um, you know, and think about what you would do. What is your Afrofuturist vision for for your neighborhood? Um, so we challenge everyone to think bold, to think about the past, but only to think about the past in relationship to what needs to be repaired, and think about what's possible in the next 50 years in your neighborhood in Buffalo. Uh, so I believe we're going to be breaking out into the breakout rooms uh, that folks have been in uh, based on the region, and we'll have different facilitators to help guide you in that conversation. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to do this. John, it's, it's Tyra again. Thank you so much for setting that stage. My blurredness is really coming out right now. Uh, I'm excited. And, you got a Black Panther uh, one? <laughs> I actually have two of them. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> one for each child. <laughs> um, so... Uh, we're going to break out into our sessions right now, as you, said, you stated, so we're just waiting for our, our host, our tech host, to help us with that. Uh, but this was amazing, and um, it's really allowing us to like expand our minds in, in ways that I think many of us probably haven't thought about before. So we should soon be think, breaking um, out into our quick, groups. Real quick, since we do have a little bit of time, we could uh, pose the question as a big group. Um, if um black panther dropped down with sherry and was like yo we about to uh we about to give you some of that vibranium money we about to make it rain um <laughs> what are some things some ideas that we have like let's let's get some of those ideas percolating and then when we go into our neighborhoods then we can uh dive deeper but if anybody has any ideas we would love to do that and uh while you're thinking uh Every second and fourth Saturday, we have Wakanda Alliance at the King Urban Life Center, 938 Genesee Street. Uh, it's a hybrid program now. So uh, last week was our first time um, in person slash on Zoom. We, um, we can uh, socially distance um, up to uh, 60 people, um, I believe. And uh, we had 24 last week, so there's a lot of room. And we still had 22 people online, so all are welcome. Um, please come check it out. It's a family event. Um, we're very uh, flexible and we make it work. But back to the question, if Black Panther came down here and made it rain with some of that vibranium money, what would we want to see um, happen? Move the city. Okay, I love what you're thinking, what you're thinking, Drew. I love what you're putting down. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Move the city of Buffalo to fully renewable energy. Yes, that's definitely something we can do. Um, Tuana, close the digital divide. Yeah, there's no reason. Uh, internet is a necessity. Technology is a necessity for us to uh, stay connected and uh, especially in times of pandemic. So close that digital divide. Probably surpass it too, Tuana. That's a good, that's a good idea. Uh, technology training for all senior block clubs. Um, yeah, that's dope. That's dope. And, but for the purposes we'll say of all of Buffalo. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. And espe yeah, especially we, we got to be more creative and resourceful. We have the uh, world's most powerful waterfalls right around the corner. Uh, there's no reason why. Uh, yeah, fix the NFTA. We should have floating um, subways that use uh, magnets um, to, uh, to move and use less electricity. Um, oh, my goodness. Yes. Let's remediate the environmental contamination. Like, um, uh, we all know that frontline communities are the most uh, affected by um, environmental contag contamination, um, by the pandemic like COVID, and uh, the first to be hit by any type of uh, climate change. So yeah, we definitely want to uh, work on that. 
Um, ooh, interactive artwork. Yes. Um, I mean, <laughs> Wakanda Alliance is full of artists. Um, myself uh, as a musician, John as a writer and musician, and as a photographer, videographer. So we definitely want to um, use some of that vibranium money and uh, really show the uh, artwork that we have. Uh, infrastructure. Um, our infrastructure is crumbling. Uh, our sewer system sucks. So I hope you are thinking about that. There's no reason why Northland shouldn't have no training. Train our people and then we should be vying the state and federal to come fix our sewage and then uh, pay us to do it. Um, trying to keep up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the, the, the juices is flowing. The juices is flowing. So I think I'm gonna stop here. It's 2.30 on my clock. So uh, I think they're gonna start to separate us. And uh, let's keep it going, guys. Let's keep it going. And just as we transition, if you're in the main room after we've broken out, just let the facilitators know uh, where you need to go. And Wakanda, for your facilitation, just let them know which rooms you're going to. They'll send you into those breakout sessions. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you.